Sup everybody, this is Carrick from ACG, and today I'm prime and pumped up to pistol whip the faces of alien races, as I bring to you the review for Battleborn, Gearbox's newest title that's one part MOBA, one part shooter, one part experimental characterization study, and let's hope, zero parts alien colonial marines. Battleborn tells the tale of a large roster of races, more than two dozen in fact, that fled the darkness of a universe that just got its electricity shut off by an ancient race hell-bent on bringing everything there to an end. A countdown to extinction, as they say, and it sees so many desperate races in one place after fleeing that destruction, and then they just suddenly start fighting. It's proof positive that if you stick enough people in a room working together is not the result, but instead someone's gonna forge a damn samurai sword out of old school chairs and kill everyone. Battleborn tries to make the characters the stars with a large number of customizations, titles, unlocks, and skills, while still making the locations interesting enough that it all just doesn't become one long numbing drive-by shooting. So let's leap into the fray, shall we? And remember, this is an online game. It's subject to far more change than a single player game, and the review is gonna be updated if those changes adjust the score. As always, if you like the video, maybe subscribe. So here's the review for Battleborn. Liquid TV intro videos walking through your own napalm because you're just that badass, and the first case of the Zika virus in a video game. Graphics are up first. You know, I'm still impressed. Despite the game's adherence to a more cartoony look, drawing both inspiration and, I'm sure the company hopes, fans from Borderlands, the fact is, at any one time, when it gets hot and heavy, it's absolutely soaked with excellent color use and over-the-top character attack designs. It runs stunningly well, even at 1440p on the 980 GTX, and I had a rock-solid locked 60 with everything on Ultra. Many times it would go much higher than that, but I hate variable anything. When it comes to artistic influence, Battleborn carries its Borderlands heritage around like good genes that have been unfortunately infiltrated by a couple hereditary missteps. Now don't get me wrong, this isn't like a child you lock in your room when the neighbors come over, but honestly, the game is sort of everywhere with its art style. You notice it almost instantly when the somewhat Aeon Flux cartoon intro starts, and someone starts rapping and trying to rhyme battle with every other word, and to be honest, it looks pretty cool, but you may be at this time thinking to yourself, what the hell is happening? Then it jumps to cutscenes that are presented totally differently, many with very little moving parts, and instead the characters standing there like cardboard cutouts drawn entirely different. Then the next cutscene might have them fully animated, then another is actually in the game. It's like they couldn't decide what they wanted to do, and so they just said, hey, let's put all the screens in. But you know what? Battleborn's about the characters, always has been, always will be. It's in the damn title, and I'm pretty sure at least one of the characters is that creepy, gooey, baby mushroom person from the movie Troll. The level of detail within the characters, their separation from one another, and their various skills and numerous animations does broaden the battle roster a bit, even if in the end some of the characters look like they suffer from one father, 30 mothers, lots of alimony syndrome, and just showed up on Jerry Springer. While everyone does look unique, the fact is they don't seem to break the mold much, especially from the bipedal form and those that go to an extreme almost groan with an artistic desire to say, hey, look at me, I'm sort of special in a group of other people saying the same thing. Now, don't get me wrong. I actually like most of the designs, but if you're not a floating head riding a battle suit around like Stephen Hawkins in The Simpsons, you're more than likely going to be pretty close in general to everyone else, at least structurally. And it shows a typical human bias that most aliens are going to look somewhat like us, not sentient pieces of month old fudge with tentacles sticking out of them. Now, once you pick up pugilists, it's time to jump into battle. When everything is going right or wrong, it doesn't really matter. The best sense of success for me in a competition-based shooter like this is that I can learn to wade through almost any graphical effect and still in some way find my warm, cozy home in an enemy's chest cavity. Terrible imagery aside, that's a mix of good game design and good art style, and though Battleborn is going to look insanely busy at first, an almost mind-numbing sea of colors splashing against the faces of dying friend and foe, after a couple of battles, the chaos sort of recedes to something a bit more like juvenile anarchy, sometimes maturing into full-scale, oh shit, when five-on-five five meet in the center of a level to decide who best deserves the title most explody. But ultimately, I feel most gamers will actually get this if they stick with it for just a couple battles. But I'm not gonna lie, occasionally it looks like a crayon factory exploded, and that's just sort of the way Battleborn looks. Now levels while employing verticality in that crow's nest moment where you top off a dude's brain juice with a bit of lead through a small peephole 20 feet away and it makes you feel awesome, they're still a bit barren regardless of gameplay type. While made up that way to clear the area for multiple opponents with fresh kamikaze killing on their mind, it still lends to a really antiseptic look to some of the levels. While some of the maps employ very little verticality, they break that up with murder holes, blind corners, and all sorts of other excellent horizontal design features that gamers are going to pick up pretty quick. And those that employ a bit more verticality are freshly devoid of campers for the most part. Graphically, I'd say that I like the look the game exudes. It's a bit hit and miss in overall theme, and even the more mundane characters still have a flourish or two that keeps them unique. Sound, music, and voice. The generator. Once we get it started, that should provide more than enough power to recharge Caldarius's assault frame. The UPR is not the sort to turn their back on a resource without a damn good reason. Something tells me we're about to learn why. <laughs> Thank you. 
And of course, sound is up first, and my lord, it's good. This is the kind of sound that absolutely helps out a player, whether they're trying to blow the irritating top hat off a cyborg butler or running away from a sentient iceberg. The fact is, the game's sound is instinctual as it is vital to proper gameplay. The layering works regardless of additional effects, and twice now I've realized an enemy was beneath me on a lower level just by the way the explosion sounded and how it reached my ears. Also, kudos to those folks for leaving all the various options in the game for sound, night mode, surround, stereo, and more. Most developers treat sound like something they can ship off to someone else and just plug in, throw in a couple options in, and there we go. But we have ears for more than just punching holes into, and a good sound use in a title means chaotic becomes controllable. Lastly, I have to say, when I'm neck deep in enemies, insides turn and outsides. The fact is, there's no mud, crunch, or overlapping effects. And that's pretty stunning, especially how many guns, skills, and environmental sounds that are all going at the same time. Stunning sound with good variability and an excellent ear for tonal differences that's easily noticeable. And of course, that brings us to music. It's okay. The rap during the intro anime was interesting, if interesting sort of also makes you think of the word forgettable, but after that it's suitably underdeveloped and in many places just damn near absent. Many games experiment with negative space in their music scores, this game experiments with positive space. What is there is a decision. It's not a complaint. It's very light, suitably lacking in the larger pieces, and is more of a synthy background cruising in your car music than anything driving or atmospheric. And the truth is, not everyone wants to take the robot butler through a series of cartoon levels with the music from Transformers playing in the background. I get that. But in my opinion, it's a bit of a missed opportunity, and in all honesty, almost one that's not even attempted. Voice. So despite the fact I was never a big fan of Borderlands, humor in Battleborn is just humorous enough to get me to crack a smile. It's just out there sometimes. In fact, you may actually be wondering sometimes what the joke is, but that's sort of half the fun and the eclectic avenue that they've chosen for these characters. And all of the characters are voiced enthusiastically over the top, like they showed up for the recording and the first thing they were told is, we have constructed a clever killing device on the floor, you have one chance. And they nailed it. From the Hellboy robotic sounding butler with hilarious lines about buying body parts secondhand, to the humorous space marine and his gung ho attitude and doing push ups. I really like those characters. Every one of them has a voice that solidifies them easily as much as their artistic appearance. And for that, I'm actually really happy. There are no real misses here, though there are a couple characters that are a little bit unsuitably dark, like there was one person who felt goth characters were underappreciated in the Battleborn roster, so they added a couple. And these characters to me are the weakest. Battleborn's much more about the tongue in cheek until of course you blow their entire face off. The darker it tries to be, the more the title seems misplaced. Gameplay. Honestly, it's pretty simple. Whether you choose to join the multiplayer fray as one of the 25 odd menagerie of mayhem or jump into the campaign, the game alone or with friends, it's about sending your enemies into the sweet reward, dirt naps, deep six, at room temperature, or living challenge. Whatever you want to call it, the game's about putting them into death and you staying out of it. First up, when you start the game, you play the first level. It's a prologue with a chosen character. This is to sure to show you the ropes, how your level specific upgrades work, movement, and is a bit of a primer for the story. After that, and actually between any levels, you're sort of dropped unceremoniously back into the menu. From here, you can continue the single player going through eight plus levels of that single player story or co-op of course if you want to do it that way and you can pick from any characters you've unlocked which includes that starting roster of five now the first thing you're going to notice with the single player is that the game levels are massive 40 minutes on the harder difficulty isn't at all unexpected and they feel far more like mini raids than individual levels sadly though you still do get a bit of that shooting gallery feel though the game tries to break it up with specific mission objectives and little things like troop carriers that drop in enemies but without a shadow of doubt the highlight here is the control. It is tight, it's responsive, skills rarely stop you from moving, and it's altogether such a feeling of relief because a game like this could have turned into a delay fest with characters taking too long to animate special moves that people were so proud about they wanted to make sure you saw them, and that results in you shooting into an empty spot like an amateur webcam. Now as you kill, you level up, and again, skills don't stay leveled between games, remember that. This is both a detriment and a service to Battleborn itself. It can at times feel a little bit weird because like you're being set back between each battle and varying levels and skills and choices you made in the past game may make remembering what you're doing in this game just a little bit off. There's just a bit of a bump. I liked it, but others may have a problem getting back into the groove. Now the boon here is that every single other person does this too, and since equipment isn't used until you can power it, that won't break the odds either. It's a unique gameplay choice. I think it works in Battleborn, but it will cause some people a little bit of thought process there. You 
you can actually unlock things like equipment loadouts, which lets you grab randomized equipment. It's a little bit like Borderlands equipment, shove it onto your character and it give you all different sorts of buffs and bonuses. You can also get mutations. Now these mutations fit within the choosable skills within a level and they are forever. Once you unlock them on a character, boom, they're there. They're not active, but they can be activated just like any other skill. Another excellent addition here, but not new to other genres, is the consistent building and upgrading that can be done to defenses like turrets and traps in a map. It's a small change, but if you find yourself with the wrong loadout or just not feeling it, you can do some catastrophic amounts of damage by just putting up turrets and traps and keeping them going. And it's around that time that you're going to probably notice there's a stunning amount of content on the player side. Many games trump a title with various numbers of levels, even though being honest, some multiplayer only titles have shipped with less levels than just the multiplayer component here. But it's on the player side with hundreds of titles you can win, the mutations, a good number of unique character skins, random equipment, somewhat like Borderlands, like I said, and new character unlocks. While the base platform may be just your goth mushroom, in the end, if you use the right equipment, you could probably turn a somewhat mundane healer into a pretty useful heavy hitter. I also think a great deal of that success has to do with the fact that both the primary and secondary attacks on characters are useful. It might also have to do with the absolutely overpowered melee attack. One pimp slap from a monocle wearing robot is enough to send enemies flying as well as a good spot of their damage being removed. It's rewarding but it's also better yet useful and really organic with the other attacks. Entirely as an unlock system, it's dynamic stuff, and it feels like you're just constantly unlocking something. Now, since you're tracked with more detail than a damn NSA interest, everything you do goes towards something. Skins, titles, unlocks of various kinds. It's actually pretty cool, and while I'm not in love with the menu and the system to navigate around, it mostly loads without pause and gives the information that I needed. Then there is the multiplayer itself. Now, I bring up this last for a reason. There's really only three types. Incursion, Meltdown, and Capture the Borderlands version of a flag, I guess. It's disappointing to see so few modes. But it's high on their list, they've said, to add new versions. For me, each game type had its strength, but I felt Capture was weakest. And the only reason I could really discern that is the maps didn't feel right for it. Your mileage is going to vary there. And lastly, you know, a game like this, I personally think, sort of flourishes with the function of its player versus player interactions across the board of its level design. But it's also in the single player and its AI and how well it creates that feeling of flexibility and randomness in those levels that aren't inhabited by humans who are pretty much known to always make questionable life decisions. I'm going to say this. While it rarely flanked or showed anything other than basic functioning, which sort of included run, stop, punch, check if I was alive, punch me again, it did work. I'd say adequate at best for the normal guys. The boss battles are hit and miss with some being fairly heavy when it comes to waves and others requiring a good combination of timing, thought, and on your feet flexibility during status changes. So there's some good and bad there. Fun factor. You know, I enjoy the hell out of Battleborn, but man, does it, it have some issues. The single player levels are indeed huge and epic, and that, of course, means they're huge and epic, which has that feeling that you're going through a slog if you died right near the end, and that is a serious chunk of time and investment that might stifle some excitement. While the multiplayer is good, some characters just really need balancing and improvements, and it's absolutely bottom barrel right now for a couple of those characters, even if you just try to be a builder. And of course, that brings us to the rating. As you guys know, I rate games on a buy, wait for a sale, rent, or never touch it rating scale, with rent being replaced by deep, deep sale for PC. Right now, what's being offered is actually a wait for a sale. Normally, fun factor like this would be an instant buy. Like I said, it's a good game and it's damn fun at times with a good deal of content but it is hampered by so-so level design and some characters needing some pretty serious balancing. But also, that always online single player and those logging out bannings that occur for multiplayer issues could see you locked out of a game type for 20 to 30 minutes on the multiplayer side, and that's not even if those people are griefers. As the single player levels need more balancing, as I discussed between checkpoint and time spent, the game hinges on areas that it's actually having a couple problems with. So if you like this review, you can always hit thumbs up. If you dislike it, hit thumbs down. Hey, check